Welcome to the Stalls ID Direct video tutorials. To begin, I have my artwork on my screen in Corel Draw, and I'm going to start by selecting the graph paper tool on the left hand side on your toolbar. And I want to make sure that I have two selected in the vertical columns and the number one selected in the horizontal columns up at the top. And I'm going to click and drag those boxes around my design and center it. A shortcut to center something on your screen is by selecting the object and then selecting P on your keyboard, P like Paul. Now I need to ungroup these two boxes so I select ungroup, arrange and ungroup. So each box is considered separate now. Now if I have a jersey that has a placket width of one inch, I'm going to need a one inch overlap width. To do that I can just create a little rectangle that's one inches wide, kind of use that as a guide on screen to see my placket width, which I see falling directly over the T. And I see it kind of overlapping a little tiny section of the T if you zoom in. And I might not want that, so I may want to make the placket width itself it's a little bit wider. Or I could actually manipulate the artwork so it doesn't have that little piece in the way. So if I select the artwork itself, I can actually drag that, fix that a little bit, so I can have my placket width where there isn't any little tiny pieces. So you may have to do a little bit of adjusting. And I'm just going to make the placket just a little bit wider right here. And maybe I'll fix this um, so it's not in the way as much just something to think about while you're creating your design. So you have a nice easy overlap. So I'm just using that rectangle as a guide right now. So what I'm going to do is first drag, I'm going to take my right square and drag that so it butts up to the one side of that rectangle. And I want to get pretty close. There we go. And then I'll want to take my left side and do the same. Just using that long rectangle that I made in the middle, just using that as a guide for my placket width. I can put that over here for now. So I, I used my paper graph tool and I made two squares over my word and then I used another rectangle that I made to simulate the placket width and then I overlapped the two squares. So now I need to use my intersect tool to actually duplicate my left and right side so we can create the two separate objects for a split front. To start off I'm going to select the right rectangle, hold my shift key on my keyboard and select the design within that same rectangle. And you'll notice at the bottom of your screen of your status bar it'll say two objects selected on layer one. So I know I have that. And you do want to make sure that before you start this process that your design is all welded. So all these lowercase letters are welded and the actual letters are welded into the tail as well. So it's all one piece. So now I want to select the intersect tool which is up here on your shortcuts kind of by the weld and the trim. So you just select intersect and what the intersect tool does is it duplicates whatever's objects inside the first initial object you selected. 
So I'm just going to click on a different color on my color palette just so I can visualize that it did only duplicate whatever was in that right square. I'm going to do the same for the left side. Select the left square, hold my shift key, select the object within that square, select intersect, and then just choose a different color so I can visually see that I have my left side and my right side. Now underneath these two are actually my, my original design, which I don't need anymore. So I can actually just delete it. So I dragged the left and the right side away from each other so I can see them. Now I'm going to make my second color. I'm just going to start with the right side. I select it, then select the interactive contour tool. And once you select that tool, at the top of your screen you'll see that you have an option to choose to create an additional layer or layers to the center, inside, or outside of the object selected. So I want to create an additional layer to the outside. I want one layer, so in the contour steps box I have just the number one. And in the contour offset box, I can choose the actual distance that I want between the two layers, which I'm going to choose 0.15. And I'm just going to select a color in the paint bucket here so I can see it. Now, 0.15 would be great if you were doing like vinyl or something like that. But if you had twill, you might need something thicker so you, you have enough room for the actual, for the thread to grasp onto. So if we choose 0.25 for a twill design, for example. So now I'm going to start with the other side. I'm just going to select the left side, select the interactive contour tool. I want to say to the outside, depending on the version of Corel, you may have to just type in a different number just to get it going and then go back to the number you want it to. Um, I've noticed that in certain versions of Corel that you have to do that. Okay, so I have two layers on my left and two on my right. Now I want to break up those layers so I can trim off this middle part where it's overlapping because you're not going to want to see that. You want both sides of the layers to be flush in the middle where they're going to end up overlapping. So I select the background only and you'll notice that it says contour group on layer one on my status bar. And go to arrange, break contour group apart. So this is actually considered a different layer. I can actually move it if, away if I wanted to. Do the same with the right side. Select the background only. It won't work if I select the foreground, so I have to select the background. Then go to Arrange, Break Contour Group Apart. So now that's considered its own layer. So now I can actually trim this middle area where it's where it created the contour butted up to the edge. So I'm going to view this in wireframe because it's easier to see. And I'm just going to use my rectangle tool again. Kind of got to get close so I can see right up to it. And I'm going to just take the rectangle tool and drag it right up to the foreground layer, but butted right up to that layer. So you can see that it's overlapping the background color where the split is. And I'm going to do the same for this side now, for the right side. All right. So now I can select the rectangle, hold my shift key, and select the background that I want to trim, and then select my trim tool at the top. And select the rectangle for the right side, select the background only, and select trim. Get rid of that rectangle because we we're just using that as a tool. And the design is complete. Thank you for watching.